Welcome to Low Country View with Earl Yates. I'm your host, Earl Yates, of course. And today, my guest, Candace Lovely, a local artist. Um, she's been called the Grand Dame of painting. She's got this um, very weird way, which we'll discuss a little later, but very, very, very awesome person. Uh, great artist, as you can see, we have paintings all around. Um, we'll talk a bit about who Candace is, some of her art, what inspires her and also her being a, a great teacher and great thinker too, someone you can really learn a whole lot from. You know, art's not the only thing she does, I, I promise. Um, so Candace, how we doing? Good. Good, good. <laughs> we, we've said a mouthful already. Yeah. But now here we are on camera, speak a little. <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about who you are and, and also your art, of course, and, and how you got your name, the grand dame of painting, and just what inspires you. So um, where are you from? I'm originally from Vermont. I grew up in Vermont. And how long have you been down here in the Low Country with us? Um, my parents moved here in '77, and um, I must admit I didn't want to come. I tried to divorce them. I said, "What about skiing?" And they said, "Well, we're going to ski out west." And I, so I tried out west, and sure enough, out west is is wonderful. But you know, I still love Vermont, but I love the South. It's a beautiful place. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we were attracted to the nature. We, f we found the nature very similar to Vermont and the fact that you want to conserve our, the landscape. Yeah, I spent a little bit of time in Vermont. What a beautiful place. I mean, this time of year, it's, it's phenomenal. It's one of the more beautiful places you'll ever see. Well, I was just there and it rained the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Bad story. And I was looking for our South Carolina men. Yeah. Evidently, the governor sent um, the Corps of Engineers up with the Hummers to help fix the landscape, the covered bridges that were destroyed in Vermont from Hurricane Irene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's quite unfortunate, but, you know, it, it's amazing. At least it's, it's Mother Nature who took that course, not uh -huh. us, you know, it's sometimes in... Well, I'm sure Vermonters, if they ever saw a snowstorm down here, they'd be right in your backyard, too, with their, with their snow plows. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> now, with your, your art. Now, uh -huh. Um, have you always been an artist? Always. Well, what? I don't know. Um, the first person that colored in front of me, I, I immediately wanted to become an artist. Yes, my first nanny. Uh -huh. Now, when is, I was about less than four, five, I guess. So you're inspired from that point and mm -hmm. uh, decided to go to college for art? Yes, I didn't think I ever had to read or write again, majoring in art, but I was quite surprised. <laughs> and here we are. Obviously, you, you read and you wrote very well, uh -huh. and it brings you to all your art. Uh -huh. Now, what inspires you most through your art? I mean, is, is it one topic that inspires you more than any other thing, or do you like to bounce around? I mean, I see so uh -huh. many different, rather it be yeah. scenes or... You have uh, still paintings and stuff well, like that? Well, something I did learn in college was anthropology. So I did start loving um, mankind. And I particularly liked painting the figure in the landscape. And so I've painted um, several women that represent like statues of liberty, love, peace, and joy. Uh, women that have baskets that are, are collecting life. Just like anthropology, we are, are the collectors and the gatherers. Well, I see in most of your um your paintings. Mm -hmm. It's usually based around women. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, every once mm -hmm. in a while you see a guy up here, he may mm -hmm. s sneak out into the... We're all painting. looking at women. <laughs> women are looking at women, and men are looking at women. And if you go through the grocery aisle, you will see all the women every single week. They all change, but they're there. Every, you know, when you're checking out with your groceries, you're going to be talking to a woman. In, uh, you know, a star. Yes. You know how all those magazines shout at you when you're checking out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And so, is that your inspiration in most of your paintings, is women? I like the women, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think gracing a room, is, it's kind of like, um, oh, we, we grace uh, gardens with statues of women. You know, why can't you grace your living room also, make the focal point of a woman in the landscape over the mantle? Would you, what would you say most of the personalities of your paintings are? As far as when you look at your painting, what do you, what do you expect people to see when they see your painting? Is well, it you? I really think painting is a lie, telling the truth. So I create attractions in my paintings. I, you know, I, I, um, 
a street fair in tents. You know, this one right here, Bluffton. This yeah. just happened. This is my freshest and my wettest painting right here. Yeah, that's I just studied fantastic. with somebody in Florida, and he was trying to t get me to put the the paint on real heavy, and I call it my high meringue. It's, there you go. It's kind of in fashion right now to have high meringue. <laughs> and everything's so beautiful. And then yeah. this one also uh, is a um, with the women. Uh, it's it's a it's like a rehearsed theme. It's like the three graces. And um, in 1990, I had such a reaction when uh, President George Bush said, you know, our troops are going to go in. I think it was Kuwait. And I thought, oh, no, war. And so I knew these three women, and we, I took them out and gave them ribbons, and we danced. And there was a little boy that had, um, was blowing bubbles, and I asked his mother if, if he could come over and blow bubbles on my girls. So this is like a reaction to war. You know, where are our women? Our women should be helping our men stay out of war. Yes. Now, um, with a lot of your, so I take it that was a, uh, a photo that you took? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Um, uh -huh. What percentage of your painting? This one I started off from life. From? It's not like I can't. Right. But a lot of times, you know, the model doesn't want to hold still. And how are you going to hold still a dance, you know? Yes. I mean, so um, I, I use everything I can get my hands on. And it's just, you know, if you don't have it, you don't have it. If it's on the canvas, that's where it is. If you got it from a photo, great. If you learned how to study, you know, darks and lights and hues, great. Whatever it is. But you... Get it on the canvas. Make an attraction. Make a statement. So is that, that's, is that your best way of speaking, you would say, is through the canvas? I mean, most artists mm -hmm. like to say that that's the way they create their voices on the canvas. Is, mm -hmm. was, was that done mm -hmm. because... Hey, I got caught picking out too many books in the Dartmouth bookstore growing up. They all had pictures. My <laughs> mother told me, put them back. <laughs> I didn't want to read or write. I understand. <laughs> I just wanted to look at the pictures. Yeah. And so that's your best way of, it, of yeah. inspiration uh -huh. and also inspiring others is uh -huh. by, by painting. Uh -huh. You do a great job. I mean, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. It's so much to see. Uh -huh. Now, of course, along with um, being a painter, I mean, you're such a, a amazing thinking person. I mean, of course, you know, uh -huh. we spoke before we came on camera, yeah. and some of your views are awesome. And just to see that everything is based on love, and it, it shows on, on the canvas for uh -huh. sure. Yes, I paint. I paint the Holy Spirit. I paint love, joy, and peace, and patience, and kindness, and goodness. Well, it definitely shows. I mean, usually when you think of artists, you know. Self-control. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most of them search for that self-control, and I guess they find it in there. I have a very uh -huh. dear friend, Chris Rogers, who's a wonderful, wonderful painter. Uh -huh. And that's certainly where he's most comfortable is uh, when he has a paintbrush in his hand. Now, uh -huh. I mean, you have, I mean, we'll show them the, the lobster a little later. Oh, which is, you're not which supposed is, to say what it is, honey. <laughs> Here I am. I mean, I totally blew it. <laughs> but it's all right. Now they, they can actually, when, once they see it, put that vision up. Oh, uh, we know when they need uh, a few hints. It's, it's a rough one. It really is. It's, it's a bad lie telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one scene, of course, you showed the one, the first one mm -hmm. that you held up mm -hmm. was um, the Bluffton mm -hmm. Market. Yeah. How much time do you spend in Bluffton doing your art? Well, I've been spending most Saturdays there with my friend Rima, Art and Kind. And uh, Rima and I are good friends. She's from Lithuania. And um, I've just become her friend. And, and she, uh, she likes to kick, kick me in the butt, as I say, because she's from Europe and she knows a lot about European art. And she's, she brings me CDs and magazines and we talk art. And it's, and it's wonderful to have a friend like that. So do you see art and absolutely everything you do or is it something where Here, you let's decide? show on Calhoun Street. Calhoun Street. Um, let's do that. Well, look at that. This, um, I've always wanted to do the store. I just never thought I could stand there and actually paint it. But when I went out with Rima, we both challenged the store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there was a camera crew right here from uh, Sun City photographing the store and talking about the history with, with Gabby. and. It, and we should love these things. They're, they're our history. Um, another beautiful island is, is Nantucket right here that I did a street scene of also, Martin's Lane. But, um, and this island is, is going through uh, tremendous change. Um, it's, it's been on the endangered lease for National Preser 
preservation with so many people coming in and wanting swimming pools and tennis tennis yards and and what how are you going to house all those people you know they're going through change also and it, and um, we need to paint these I, I did a show right here on Hilton Head once it was called Vanishing Landscapes and um, even my brother challenges me what is civilization is it really good for you is progress really good for you and so I'm preserving things I'm saying you know this this street scene right here is gorgeous it's a little brick line stream and, and why shouldn't we always love it and why shouldn't we love the people the farmers that come out let's paint them you know they bring out their tents and and the officer here is he's guiding traffic right here and I just love it the the stillness of this car the stillness of the tents and that and all the motion of of the people I just thought that was really fun to paint in 20 minutes and that's all just Quick. <laughs> well, that, that's what we'll pick up on the second part of the show. Is definitely talk uh -huh. about your your teaching side because uh -huh. um, I guess some artists believe everybody has a little art in them. And yes. I don't know. I guess I would, yeah. would hope that I have a little bit. I don't know uh -huh. how much, but we'll, we'll start on that as soon as uh -huh. we get back. Well, this has been Low Country View with Earl Yates, um, Candace Lovely, wonderful, wonderful artist and wonderful person. We'll take a short break and come right back, and we'll continue with um, with Candace Lovely. It's almost like the name's not real. Take care. <laughs> Welcome back to Low Country View with Earl Yates. I'm your host, Earl Yates, and I still have the lovely Candace Lovely here. And we'll continue to talk about Candace and her life and her paintings, but um, let's start with you being such a, a great teacher. Now you've moved to where you're teaching others how to uh, express themselves through painting. Uh -huh. uh, was that a desire that you always had that you would pass on the, the ability of painting or is it something that you just fell into? You know I think um, it was just natural for me. My mother is a teacher. Her mother was one of the first teachers in Boston. A woman teacher. And she graduated from Radcliffe and she also married a man from Harvard. So Education's always been in my family. My um, grandmother made sure that we all went to college. We all had money for, for education. She was um, from a lawyer family in Vermont, the Whittemores, very beautiful family. Her family takes me back to the Mayflower. So education's always been around. And I, my late husband um, was a professor of medicine at Boston University Hospital. And he, you know, that is education right there. It, Boston is the educational hub of the universe. And I'm so happy to have been able to been blessed by knowing this city growing up and studying art from Boston. It's like a melting pot of all the people of, of the world to come. You wouldn't believe the people that come for medical health care in Boston. It's amazing. Now with your um, with your classes as far mm -hmm. as what do you start your students, those that you're teaching how to paint? What is it mm -hmm. the first thing that you well, I try have to, them understand? I try to teach them to see. Um, basically, there are three things that you need to know when you're painting something. You need to know its value. You need to know the color, the hue. And then you need to know the intensity. Is it a, 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 a dull orange or a bright orange, the intensity of something? Okay, so, so we have um, value first. Just dark and light. I, stu I studied five years in Boston just charcoal drawings. Charcoal, charcoal, charcoal. Trying to find a hard edge, a soft edge, a lost edge. Trying to make the, the form turn in, in the light, going around a head. I did Socrates. And Leonardo da Vinci made it very clear. It's a very clear statement. Form is made where the highlight meets the shadow. And it, you can get a likeness when you learn to see just that highlight and the shadow meeting each other. So that's where we start. And then we move on into color. Wow, that's, uh -huh. that's pretty deep. I never, uh -huh. you know, didn't think of it like that, but of course it makes uh, perfect uh -huh. sense. Now, as far as the emotion, what do you, is there a certain emotion that one must have to start painting? or you can be as erratic as, as you possibly want to be. Oh, you can be anything on canvas, but I promise you, you only have these four corners, and somehow you've got to get somebody there. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Okay, so it's all about the person who's looking at it, huh? 
all about a line directing you. Oh my goodness, look at these diagonal lines. A diagonal line is like a boy throwing a ball. It's excitement. And then you throw in these horizontal lines, it's going to calm you right down. And then you throw in this vertical line, it's going to shoot you right out of the painting. But So you put in a horizontal line to calm you down. And then you throw in the diagonal line to keep you going. Wow. It's fun. Here it is, <laughs> in a nutshell. Now, I am a director. I have your eye. Now, now you're talking about the diagonal. That makes me think of um, of your your flag. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the flag. Yes, of course, well, you, that you have that T-shirt. If you want to oh, pull yes. that out, okay. and you can show well, you know, our views in, exactly in, what in we're talking about. In 2001, I made a show of black, white, and pink. Yes. And I said, I can make an attraction in black and white with a medium heel hit pink. And I'm going to teach you how to make an attraction. Well, one of them, I did two flags. One of them I did um, the St. Andrews, the Confederate flag, and I'm calling it Good and Plenty Kiss. It's a kiss. Uh, a painting is a, a lie telling the truth. Well, let's look at it as a kiss. Let's love one another. Let's answer every complaint with love now. Let's have a resurgence. Let's, let's not be afraid of it. Maybe one time uh, people were afraid of uh, this flag, Good and Plenty Hugs. But look how much we love people today. You know, the, we love our English ancestors. We, we had a dispute, we got over it, and now we're a nation, we're 150 years, and we have freedom. Yes, for sure. We're erecting a freedom tower in downtown New York, and here it is, they're, they're using 1776. Yes. Let's learn from this how, how to be friends again. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So I, I think we should all have a little game of tic-tac-toe here and love one another. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Answer every complaint with love. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, I mean, I, I think that would certainly change our view of, uh -huh. of who we are as people if uh -huh. everybody bases everything on love. Of course, it's easy to say, and we all think of that, but um, T -shirts very are, rarely are is that really the way to fun. go. I, I found this one, and I'm from Vermont, so keep Vermont weird. I keep Vermont weird. Well, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. going to keep weird here and throw my hugs and kisses all over. <laughs> <laughs> Vermont does have its little weird side, that's for sure. <laughs> I spent some time up there, so I know. Well, the sap runs in the spring. Now, um, with we have, of course, I kind of gave it away, so if you were in the second, <laughs> in the first okay, part of the show, here. if you saw. Watch this. Um, there it is. Oh, there does it is. anyone know what this is? Isn't this here, fun? Here, I'll hold it up, absolutely. There we go. This is something that Monet was trying to do. He was... He was breaking color next to each other. Well, now I have organized it in, in squares called pixels, which we are in an era of pixels. And um, a well-known artist in um, uh, the middle of the 1900s, uh, jo Joseph Albers, just made paintings out of squares. And he said, if you put one color next to another, you're going to have a new color. Well, guess what? You're having a new color happen here. And if you squint, these colors are going to come together, and you're going to know what the subject is. Well, now, uh, some people still don't know. Maybe they think it's a city. You thought it was a woman once? Yeah, yeah. See, when, when you put it like that, oh, man. <laughs> it's, oh, upside down. <laughs> upside down. Other way. Let's go this way. Okay, now some of you are jumping up and down knowing it, and others still don't know. I'm going to tell you right now. It's our American lobster. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, what it reminds me of is um, you have the art that they do with the paint, with the the photography that you got small pictures yes. that make up uh, one grand picture yes. and of course uh -huh. like you ta talked uh -huh. about the uh -huh. colors and the shapes and everything yeah. like that well art is an entertainment and Thomas Wolfe said that um, art massages one's eyeball so it's this rapid rem where we, we want it we feel it we see it it's something new we get it just when we see flat screen TVs you'll want one you know it's that new excitement on the eyeball now, with your art, um, I guess most of the, the the paintings that you see are pretty direct. I mean, you look at it, you know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you have your different mm -hmm. type of painting, like mm -hmm. the like the Great Lobster right there. Mm -hmm. But with How expression, about this one? I yeah, think we're going towards one. this one. Absolutely, because this one's just full of things, isn't that's, it? That's that's our uh, All right. our war. And this is a contemporary God, that's, painting. That's phenomenal. Uh huh. Um, when I was a child, we had the Japanese come and visit us, and they learned how to make machines to make car parts. 
Um, we were like the seventh largest in machine, tool, and die, Springfield, Vermont. And um, the Japanese men would come and they would stay in our house and my mother and I, we would, we would change their sheets or whatever they were our guests. And, and then they would go to the shop with my dad and learn car parts. Nice. <laughs> well, Springfield's not making car parts today, but <laughs> and this was one of the gifts that they brought me. And so I had this large compassion when when I heard about all the devastation. I think they call it is it three three eleven they call theirs? Three eleven, I believe. It happened in March. The tsunamis and the nuclear reactors. So I made these colors. It's basically just just yellow and blue. And and then um some of their culture, their, their folk art, their, their love for Mothra or Godzilla, the way that they handle fear. This is a lion dance. And yes, they're going to survive. They're going to, we love them. I've got a little Hello Kitty down there, too. And Hello Kitty. Uh -huh. You've got to love it. Mm -hmm. I um, tried to put skulls in, in this tablecloth. And I really have a hard time painting ugliness. I think they came out a little bit like Westies, but. Yeah, I'm glad to see that. We don't need skulls in there. I know, but um, the um, the Japanese culture, white is a funeral color, and we lost many, many people. So you know, this is a whole feeling of love and life on an island, and saving a culture, and, and the children, the the nations that are going to grow up from this disaster. Oh, for sure, that's fantastic. I mean, you're. Your art is so lovely. It's it's in, it's pretty unbelievable to see so much of it and, and such a different variety of everything you do. Well, thank of course, you. Um, it's been lovely to have you on. I mean, it's been wonderful. Well, wonderful. listen, you deserve an award today. Yes. And um, this is the year that Kate and Princess Prince William got married. Yes. It's it's a fascination year. Everybody's okay. got one of these little hats. You see. <laughs> <laughs> I found mine in Boston. My girlfriend gave it to me. <laughs> in and, um, and I want you to have a special award that my mother used to give to the children of the neighborhood when she was teaching them how to act or how to be good. And you are a wonderful actor to bring your talent and share with so many people in, in our living rooms. And this is your... This is mine. This is your... Oscar? No, I think it's a Roscoe. Oh, look at that. <laughs> An upside down Oscar. He, I have my own He's winning Roscoe. it today. There it is. For thank you. For being such a wonderful gem in the low country. Oh, thank you very much. Sharing all our talents with each other. Well, Candace, it's been absolutely fabulous and, and very entertaining. I, I, I don't get this entertained on Low Country View ever, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel like it was your show today. Well, and that, we're going to go perfect. somewhere, honey. <laughs> well, this has been Low Country View with Earl Yates. I'm your host. And, of course, we've had Candace Lovely. Thank I mean, you. you. You see what it's about. I mean, God it's bless you all. Awesome art. Have a great day, and thank you for visiting.